In this video I'm going to show you a locomotion system I've been working on for a standing experience in VR. I call it the play pit locomotion system and the idea is to get a, a physical representation of your play area into the VR space. So first of all you'll see that I've got the camera up there, your tracking camera. And if I try and walk out of the camera bounds I'll get a grid warning me before I finally lose the tracking. Down on the floor, I've got a series of um, squares that show me the shape and area I've got available to walk around in. So I know I'm quite safe to move around here while I'm playing the game. And also if I move towards my physical desk, I've got a representation of my desk. So I could have a, a drink on that line or put my controller, get down, go away and do something and then come back and pick it up again. If I move away from the camera, you'll see that I get a red arrow to tell me which direction the camera is. Uh, the reason for that is to make the most of the tracking. It's going to work best if you're facing the camera, especially with the DK2 at the moment. So if I turn 180 degrees, you'll see I lose the tracking and I get a warning there telling me that I can actually do a 180 by pulling down on the analog stick. So it's best to try, try and stay facing the, uh, the camera as much as you can. Now the method of moving round is I've got a few different types of movement but they're all based around teleporting so first of all I can just do a simple click so I just look where I want to appear give a click and you appear there straight away so no sliding movements because they could create nausea we're just going to appear there straight away. The second method of moving around is where we've got a point of interest which is this sphere so the developer decides what's the best position for you to examine this object in and the green arrow identifies it's a point of interest and I can just basically look at that, click and it does this in two stages first the object moves towards me and it's positioned itself underneath my camera then it moves my play pit and myself back to the object's original location so it does it in those two stages to make sure I'm facing the camera so if we look at that again, the green arrow shows where I'm going to appear and the direction I'm going to be facing. You'll see it move around as I move around my play area. And as I click, it moves over to me, and now we appear in an ideal position to look at it. And that's where I've just come from. The third method of moving around gives the user a bit more control. So what I can do with this type of movement is to hold my teleport button down and you'll see a representation of the play pit. So you can see the headset. So if I duck down, see that lowers. Uh, where my physical desk is. And you can see the camera as well. And the black arrow on the floor shows the direction I would be facing if I let go of the teleport button now. So if I slide this over here and rotate it so I can position myself by the desk. Here we are. So if I go towards the back of my plane area where the tracking's uh, at its widest, I know there I'm safe to look, duck down and really have a look in these drawers. And this is one of the advantages of a standing experience. You can really get down and explore things. And it does make you feel as though you're more part of the environment. So if I want to go and have a look at the bookshelf, I can go and put a long edge against there in my play pit. So now I can actually walk along the length I've got available while I examine the books. So as you see that does give you quite a lot of flexibility to choose where you want your environment to be around the object you want to investigate and rotate it and get it into a nice position. Now in this next area we're going to be trying a few things to try and induce a, a sense of presence. Um, and this works much better in a, a standing uh, environment. So, what I'm going to do is if I hold my teleport button again, you'll see as I'm holding this, if I move around my play pit, my representation, the cursor moves around. So if I walk to the back of the play pit, you'll notice I don't have to look down because I you can see uh, the cursor over there. Position myself right next to the door. 
Now I can have a little play with this dough. You stick the head in and you get a nice feeling that you need to move it. And when I'm ready, I can physically walk through. And one of the cool things with this is because you're on your feet, as the door comes towards you, you do really feel as though you want to step that little bit quicker and get out of the way. So I'll have another look at a few other things. So I can rotate around here. And this is a doorway that's been set at your eye level. So again, I'll move back to the back of the, my play pit. Go to the edge. And you just get that sense that you want to duck down and move around it. And similarly, if I go over here, there's a little tunnel. So I can put my play pit in there. And I can duck down until the headset shows that I'm at a suitable height so I don't bang my head. And then I'm in there. I can look around. Oh, I could try and squeeze through a gap here. So you can see how you can really be on your feet and explore the environment. Now, just here it feels as though I need to turn sideways to get around this corner. And they're all just nice little sensations that makes things a bit more interesting. So to get up the stairs here, rather than having a, quite a, a poor experience of bumping up stairs, I can use a point of interest. So I'll look at the banister. The green arrow shows where I'm going to appear in the direction I'll face. And there you see I've uh, appeared in the right location. And the same with this banister. So I could just do it manually and position myself. But I'll use the point of interest again. And in this next demo, uh, this is quite a nice one. Again, I'll walk to the back of my play area. Put it right on the edge of this drop. So I can have a look down. Get a sense of the height, and then when I'm ready, step across the gap and balance on this wall, nice and precarious. So if you go up to this next level, there's some more instructions up there that show you how you can use some normal first-person shooter type movements. So I can hold a certain button down and use my analog sticks to drive the play pit around. So it always goes in the direction of the camera. I can rotate it as well. So I put a bit of warning in on saying I don't particularly advise this method because there is a greater chance that you're going to feel a bit sick with it. But it's there for the hardcore uh, type players who really prefer to use that kind of movement. So have a good play around with it. Download the demo and just have a explore around and see what you think and do let me know what you think of the ideas uh, any shortcomings of it any ways I can improve it and I do hope to keep developing this and make something that's going to give you a really good experience that's flexible and really helps you get a sense of presence even on a DK2